as well. Skeen's a very comfortable Lee Sin player. And I want to see, usually we see, uh, or we saw a lot rather in the previous patches, the Lee Sin paired with LeBlanc as just a solid, lots of kill pressure, obviously good mixed damage profile. I wonder if Vitality are conscious of that, if they're willing to take the LeBlanc away here. Yeah, I actually think it could be the Rek'Sai LeBlanc. I was going to bring up Rek'Sai, I believe this is the champion Skeens played into uh, the Lee Sin the last time he saw it too. Uh, good matchup there, level three, a lot of ganks, especially towards the bottom lane, could be an option. Makes me think even more that Hillisang would rather go for the Thresh himself, uh, it's sort of keep safe in that two versus two, especially on red side versus the rec side. But now Forsaken, like, obviously he's hovering the A soul here. Like, the Cassiopeia has been by far his best champ. We saw that in week one. He looked real good on that one. There's always going to be a very different look, though, and give Vitality a much different style where it's less about, you know, that consistent DPS in, like, skirmishes or fights and gives them more pick tools later on. Yeah, I like the amount of control that this draft gives them, you know, both the Rek'Sai with the Tremor Sense as well as the potential for Zoe to kind of threaten over walls with a decent bit of vision. <laughs> okay. 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 I love Makes it. Makes things love it. look good. Now, you heard yep. in the pop quiz what Whippo want buff. Now, it may not have been buff, but that's not going to stop Whippo from picking it. It is the singe for Whippo. Standing or sitting proud on that stage because he knows why you folks are cheering. Look, here's my immediate analysis of this matchup. We'll do the rest when we actually get in the game. Set, he likes to punch you, right? But he can't. If he can't hit you, he's going to be sad, and the Singe is just going to be running away from him. What don't you do? Chase Singed. What does Set have to do, Ender? He has to chase people. Exactly. Oh, hard countered. <laughs> <laughs> it's also interesting because, like, of course, I, we'll, we'll save this yeah, for yeah, save so, so for now, it is we the Zaya Band stuff. away. Top lane matchup pretty decided. There is, of course, um, or normally there would be the potential to flex the Set, as we haven't seen it played in mid lane, but with the Zoe locked in Forsaken, it confirms those matchups. And I want to see what the priority is here. They're going to take away the LeBlanc, a good show of respect to the side of Nemesis. But Nemesis, I think, a like, lot of LeBlanc options into for Zoe. Nemesis? Like, okay. Like, I don't really think of, of the LeBlanc pick yeah, when Nemesis I, that, is playing mid lane. That feels like you're banning against the tier list and the potential counter right. matchups rather than against the player, right? Yeah, where Nemesis is going to, like, roll in, like, drop the Vagar on him and be like, see you later, nerds. I mean, to be fair, singed Vagar sounds pretty obnoxious. With Spooky Ghost, with the ability to ground an opponent, <laughs> I'm, re I'm, I'm actually, I've convinced myself. I'm ready for the Vagar. Yeah, are you, are you ready for the Orn, though? Uh, also ready for that. Yeah, because I think it's the Orn. Oh, that's fair. I think, like, you know, Whippo, you're going to do the magic damage this game. Drop the Orn in the mid lane. I've seen Zoe be real sad when she can't just one-shot that yep. guy. It's Whippo's second Singed game. He put it once in 2018, if I remember correctly. He got solo killed by Vizichachi in lane, messing up a tower dive. Uh, so we'll see if he can improve <laughs> on that legacy. It was, I believe, it was Singed into Renekton. Uh, he went a little bit too deep and ended up dying for it. But it is the Cassio now locked in, so taking a pick away from Saken. Of course, yeah. good news for Saken is he's going to know this matchup, most certainly. <laughs> Bad news is there's poison all around. We've got a thematic going. Oh, my God. Wait, they actually do. They have the double poison. Wait, that's so insane. <laughs> I lo wait, I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure she gets the bonus off when she just eats when he has I'm the poison. Almost not, unless they've changed it. I don't think they've it's changed it. It's one of those obscure rules that literally has never come up <laughs> because only Cassio has been good at any given point. Do you remember like a normal game like season four, like when you just started out, it's like, let's play Timo Cassio Pio bot lane. Fair, It'll be so broken. Reckless spammed Timo <laughs> top and off season. But now we have the composition for Vitality. I like that they've just picked down the line. Every player just picked their respective role on their respective pick. But we do have the Kaisen Nautilus. We've got the Zoe. We've got the set and the Rexai. So we have a ton of pick potential. Good setup on the side of Vitality with a nice bounce. The team fight damage feels actually pretty well rounded. On the opposite side for Fnatic, I think it's a somewhat similar story. The big difference to me is is the singed pick. Yeah, the, the singe is something we're gonna have to look a lot at because this is going to be a situation where it's gonna be very hard to deal with the singe in a side lane, right? Like, of course, people have played against singe, you know, to avoid him at all costs, but a set in a side lane is gonna be trying to clear away waves, right? While, while singe does things. He also is gonna be a huge disruptor in the back line, which could give Zoe a lot of problems because she doesn't have that same innate mobility uh, locked into her kit. So this is gonna be a situation where Blippo with like a right just glory just gonna be sprinting towards Saken and trying to catch him out. You know, we saw in the last game, the Zoe does get caught out, very difficult for her to win fights. However, if you do get an advantage on the side of Vitality, very easy to extend it. It's a lot of members of this team. Getting closer and closer to the game as the coaches will walk across, shake hands, and get ready. Last words of advice to the players on how to play this one out. And knowing Fnatic, all eyes on the level one, all eyes on the early game to see what the strategy around this singed pick is. Whippo's always got some sort of cocktail pick going on. This time it's a little bit more literal than any other one. Yeah, and, and, and all eyes on Vitality, in all honesty, right? Like, this is a super difficult matchup for them, but this team needs to come out and show something new, needs to show something strong. Just give fans some hope in this team moving towards as we get closer to the halfway point of the season.
Have to. Good to set expectations. Can this team find a win here against Fnatic? Monumental task, no doubt. And here we go, Fnatic versus Vitality. I'd say David versus Goliath, but we say that every time a top team plays a bottom team. So instead I'll say Fnatic favored. So for Vitality, it's gonna be about both proving to the casters and the audience that they can execute on this early game and also contain, are like maintaining any sort of lead that they build for themselves. And also just proving that Conqueror is busted. They've got three of them in this game. It's so a Conqueror Singed up in the top lane too. So of course, gonna be able to ramp that up over time. Makes sense when you consider that Singed wants to be in your face for a very long time. And as we sort of break down this, this match a little bit more, because that was the, the promise I made in Champs. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. we'll talk about Set versus Singe. And the theory around why I think it's so good is like, Singe has always done really well into like tanks in the top lane or people that don't have like a lot of like really high upfront damage. And I don't think Set necessarily fits that bill where he wants to like beat you over time a little bit more. And on top of that, Set's W really doesn't give him a lot of value against uh, against uh, Singe, especially the shield, because it's a super high shield amount that ticks off very quickly. Singe doesn't have any burst damage, really, outside of his E, his flip. He's going to be doing a lot over time, so by sort of having this thing that can never has a big ability you want to dodge, it makes it so Cabochard can't do a whole lot. And honestly, when Cabochard lays down the W before the flip goes through, but we can just flip him over his head, and, and then his miss. W repositions. It misses. And I like that. And additionally, it just feels like, while the good news for Cabo Shard is that, um, you know, the pick rate, the passive is going to mean extra health regen. It's going to be very hard for Blipo to kill him. It's just, I just don't think it's going to be a very interactive lane phase, short of anyone falling uh, behind significantly or pulling ahead significantly, which outside of jungler intervention, probably just should not happen. Yeah, so Bupo did start with a Dark Seal here as opposed to the uh, Corrupting Potion. I think if he went Corrupting Potion, you'd see him playing a lot more aggressively in the early lane, like spamming mana to, to get the push in this matchup. Instead, he's just allowing Cabochard to sort of slowly push it in on towards his tower. He knows Lee Sin won't be around his side of the map for a little while, but could potentially look for a gank later. Ooh, that nice big Nautilus hitbox. Somewhat positive trade for the side of Vitality. A quick level two means they will get control of the lane. We'll have a bit more pressure. It's not going to mean much for Skeens, however. Both junglers handshaking on clearing out their bot side before moving to the top lane. So these bot lanes will be isolated for a while. And a hook going to connect again. Chat oh, troll, that's so clean. What? And look, like some people are going to talk about Nautilus ho uh, hook hitbox, but I don't think that's it. I just think Hillisang was, was frankly no, just No, we, we honestly have to talk about Hillisang. Like, this happens too much. I'm going to be honest. Like, of course, like... Hill saying, we know him, he's like high, high risk, high reward type of player, but that was just like high risk, no reward, right? When you know the enemy bot lane's like close to level two, they have the stronger level one over you as well. Like just big blunder in all honesty should not be happening. Well, that kill's gonna make things easier for the Kai'Sa. We'll, we'll track the Kai'Sa build path. May still see the Muramana, have to see if it's the Storm Razor. Yeah, so I, I've still been seeing a lot of the Muramana. The, the one thing that I, I'll, I'll mention now is I've actually seen some people try to go for like the fast E evolve, or instead of finishing off your Gensu Super Foul, oh, top play. back, grounded, oh. snared. Cabochard now gonna be in trouble, but the set should be good enough to pull this back. He's just walking away. Okay, Skeens is coming up so they can't chase because they know Rek'Sai should be finishing his clear towards the top side of the map. So Cabochard will be okay to get on out of here. I actually really like the aggression from Skeens who trying to find a low HP self-made. And it's a flash for flash trade at the end of the day, but they also burn time from self-made. If Skeen's found a Krug camp, he'd be pretty happy with this one, but he does not. Ping's coming out onto him. Pull back there onto Blipo. Cabochard has to be very careful. Flip uh -oh. back. Oh, no, 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 no. Tower, but not enough. That's the set damage. He's healing up. No, the one for one. They literally die on top of each other. Yeah, Blipo says we take those right there. <laughs> You love the combo though. I like that change got put into the game like five years ago or something. Like it's been in there for a long time, but like when you when you flip them, dude, it's all been a long it's been time. A, it's dude. been a long time. But yeah, of course you you drop the goo behind you and then you just chuck him into and it. And he, is, and he knows he can do it because the minions aren't in tower range. Quite wait a second. Okay, yeah, so the minions die out to the poison, even though the initial turret shot aggroed towards them, um, which means that Book was able to finish off that kill. A bit messy. I'm not going to lie, but... Singe lanes are always messy. That's very true. But I, I like the setup there. Any other champion, they're like, oh, you've laid down the goo, I'll dash away. Against Set, well, he doesn't get to do that. I just move a little bit slower. 
and I can't flash. There it is. Reckless though. We'll have self-made as backup here. Hillisang potentially acting as tasty bait. Jack Troll may be tempted to go forward here and fish for the hook, but you can see him backing up. I actually love this patience. Because that's, that's, like, that's such a bait. <laughs> like, that is juicy bait, too. You're like, oh, Hillisang's already overstepped yeah. once this game. No, Jack Troll's like, Hillisang's crazy, but he's not that crazy. <laughs> oh, top lane. Ooh, oh, he did. Oh. Knock up, pulled back with the face breaker, the flip over. He's now oh. running out to safety. And oh, couldn't even see it. It was under the ground. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> that's the haymaker. Yeah. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought for a second, but we'll get out. But ball lane. Jack Troll hooking to safety. The heal now comes out. The body block coming in from comp. I like it. Jack Troll is going to walk away with his life. And Vitality are smashing this early game. It's not going to slow down either. Because right now, Skeens is clearing the Raptor camp. I think he wants to try and come over this wall on towards Nemesis. Now that Nemesis has ticked to six, though, I don't think that's going to be the case. Second will just push in this middle lane. Skeens will take this camp, maybe even the Krugs too. But he really wants to try and bully Whippo because Whippo lost his flash so early on. And now Sen is level six as well. This is when you want to fight. But Whippo's going to lay down a little bit of damage here. Skeens is going to focus on the camp, but will smite and walk away. And I like the respect shown to Singed. It doesn't seem like a lot of damage at first, but obviously it adds up very quickly. But it does mean that Whippo just gets a big leash on the Krugs and a bit more XP in his pocket to balance out his lane state. But we have to just take stock of things while we have a, a moment before people start killing each other again because it is massive CS lead for Cabo Shard. 2-1 uh -huh. further set in the top lane. And on the bottom side of the map as well, Comp and Jack Troll winning out pretty decisively in this lane as well. Yeah, so you just play it one more time. You can see the Tremor Sense. Skeen's tracking uh, Whippo into his jungles. Just waits over the wall. Oh man. He even uses the Blast. No, he doesn't use the Blast. going to be out. Wait a second. I got I trolled there. He turned around. <laughs> and now he's in trouble. This is where... Oh, Cabo Whippo, Shard. Bippo thinks he's safe, but little does he know. Yeah, under the ground, you can't see the hitbox. It's invisible. Doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. Oh, no. He TP'd Bob. Knock up. Comp just instantly died. Jack Troll is next. They went from winning everything to just dying in an instant. That's going to be another one. Hillisang grabs the kill. This game is moving too fast for replays. We need to slow down here because Fnatic not giving any time over towards Vitality. Now it's a level six singe, able to make that play happen. And that was honestly just like, it has to be like good ward placement deep inside the lane with a pushing Vitality, not necessarily tracking that and not willing to respond to the teleport themselves from Cabo Shard, Shard either. And look, Ender, you said a game with Singe is going to be messy. A Singe lane is going to be messy, and it definitely has been thus far. Whippo making up for some of the lane discrepancies. And meanwhile, as we check in, bot lane looked like a, kind of a shining light, honestly, for Vitality alongside top. But now, top lane starting to even out, and mid lane also starting to look kind of disastrous as Aiken falls further and further behind in terms of CS. Yeah, I mean, Nemesis is just smashing right here, showing respect too, letting the lane push up. But I, I actually, even more than that, I love the swap coming through from Fnatic because as they got the play in the bottom lane, they said, Whippo, stick around. Selfmade, stay, take the dragon, now reset. Now Selfmade's gonna be getting back onto the top side of the map the same time that Rift Herald is spawning. And there's not an objective because they took Drake for Vitality to trade on the other side of the map. So this sort of pulls Vitality into a potential skirmish where Fnatic should be favored. And you look back at this, good TP comes in from Whippo. Came into this play, of course, late on the Spectre, but now seeing it in full, it's just very clean, very simple setup. Grounding the Kai'Sa just means there's actually no escape. Would have had to flash so early and still probably would have died. Unfortunate news there for Vitality. As a lot of the work they put in towards the top side of the map gets evened out. Now, Vitality were able to secure good vision in this top side river. So it doesn't seem like Fnatic want to start that one up anytime soon. Also with Nemesis on a reset means that they're just going to play things a little bit safer at the moment. I also think when you look at like overall scaling between these two teams, you have to give the advantage over to Fnatic with a consistent DPS of the back line of Cassiopeia. Um, on top of the fact that you also have this Singe that's going to be a huge disruptor in the back lines of Vitality against two relatively like, you know, immobile, forsaken, low range for a comp. He can deal a lot of damage and just cause so much like annoyance for those team teams. Skeens though, going in. Knockup comes out. Ulti going in from Nemesis as well. Seiken trying to chase down, but hasn't been able to land the bubble. Nemesis flashes away. Big commitment here from Seiken. Uh -oh. the flash. Can't commit for that one. Drexai goes over. Bit of a fumble on the cooldowns there, but now they have to be careful. Skeens needs to make his way out of this one. Has the knockup to cancel, but the kick nice. totally clean from Selfmade denies the unburrow opportunity. That's the only way to do it, too, because it's not even like Skeens has to like reactively knock up. If he just A clicks the ground, it will automatically unburrow and interrupt Lee Sin's Q when he comes on through there. So by CCing Skeens so he couldn't get that knockup, oh, it allowed no, him to finish Jack it off. He thought he had a chance to back, but this is not that opportunity. Now has to run away, not getting anything done. Comp watching his support die for the second time this game. How is this happening? 
just caught out in the river like that. Fnatic, like, all over the map right now. Now Singe just pushing in towards mid lane. They're able to pick up another objective for themselves in, in terms of this Rift Herald. They picked that up pre-14 minutes too, so that'll likely go in one of these lanes to knock down a, a tower, get some plates on some of your carries. Like, just drop that Nemesis in lane. Get them even more fed now and on this Cassiopeia. The thing that makes this so scary too, right, is that, don't get me wrong, Comp is holding on to his CS advantage. Comp is looking fine. But the other strong point for the map, which was Cabo Shard, the more you look at this Fnatic composition, the more useless you realize Set <laughs> is as a champion. And it's no nothing against Cabo. We'll hold that thought as we look back at this play. But the execution here, a bit fumbled. But at the end of the day, they get the kill. And I think that's what matters for Vitality. Yeah, I mean, Nemesis, super greedy. Right? Oh, no, he, he had used his flash at this point. So couldn't really dodge for that. He was trying to walk into Seiken so that he would take less damage from the Zoe Q. So I can totally understand this. This is what I was talking about again, though. Flash, kick. Skeens can't knock him up. Yeah. Feels bad, man. But as I was saying, Set can't chase the Singe. MF has Strut, she just walks away from you. Rakan also gets to dash away from you. Cassio has infinite stuns, infinite snares, has Conquer 2. Might even be able to outduel you. I just. All this extra gold, all this advantage that Cabo Shard has built up for himself, I don't actually see an easy way for Vitality to utilize this champion. Yeah, I, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really don't think Set is the greatest first pick, uh, especially now after the nerfs where a lot of his, you know, dominance has been toned down a bit. Like, it's really easy to pick a lot of CC and make it so they can't access your backline so that you're only really effective when you come in from a flank TP or, or like, the perfect flank two where you can close the gap to the backline without, like, them sink. So you can do it from the fog of war or catch them off guard. That's where set can be effective when we come into team fights, but, like, he doesn't have, like, a, a stationary front line, like a Sejuani to be punching in in the face in this game. He doesn't have anyone to really grab. Comp. Clash of the safety. TP behind, though. The ultimates. Comp now going oh. back in. That's crazy. They're going to continue on the play. Jack Troll now moving forward. Cabo Shard looking to make a difference. That TP, it might not be a flank, but it might still be enough. Facebreaker to pull Reckless back. Timed as it comes out, but not quite timed well enough. Reckless with a clean flash to escape. Down bot side, though, that's the Rift Herald going down, and Fnatic have enough members up here to clear away the minion wave. So really nicely done by them to stall out the dive, even if they had to use everything to make it happen. They're still pushing down bot lane, too. Vitality cannot get back in time. They must get this tower. Has to be a big commit, though. Capos are just walking, just flexing, just hoping to catch them. Nemesis locked up. The CC is there. They're going to dunk him down. Nemesis can't get anything done. The knockout comes through as well, and Reckless just has to watch his team die. That's going to be big for Vitality. Uncharacteristic greed there from Fnatic sticking around the tower after they had an opportunity to get away from that one. Regardless, Vitality still want a base because there's a lot of minions. They're losing to that tower in the bot side of the map. And with the fortifications increasing, the more plates you take down, the more members in the area, Vitality just could not punch through it quickly enough. And I gotta say, good on Vitality to react to the initial uh, attempted pick onto Comp aggressively. Hard thing to do with confidence. A lot of teams would just let Hillisang get away with burning that major cooldown. He'd have it up again for the next fight, but they do double down. They do try to capitalize. At the end of the day, sadly, Fnatic still coming out on top, still holding the gold lead, getting the second Drake as we convert over yeah. to the Inferno map. They're just getting every objective here. And, oh no, Inferno map. This feels so bad for Vitality's comp, actually. Like, Zoe, she wants bigger walls to, to fire through. She wants b brush that she can sit in to, to throw those to throw those bubbles out from. Rek'Sai 2 is a champion that loves walls. Otherwise, his, his tunnels to get over walls, like, it just... This is actually the worst case scenario for the map choice. I'm, I'm gonna be honest here. Of course, it is a good dive from Vitaly to come on through here. Not really much of anything Fnatic could do to escape. Reckless just like looks on in horror yeah. like, did you really need those minions, guys? <laughs> really? It's like <laughs> now comp has kills. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is Seth's really happy about the lack of walls. Is he though? Cause like, if I'm set, I'm like, I just want to sit in a bush and then hope they face check. <laughs> but now people can't go over walls to get away from him. Like That's the Rakan, true. The least now, one. I will counter that one more time and say that Fnatic have a lot of champions that can't go over walls, so they're fine. True. Yeah, Inferno Rift. Inferno Rift, like, it feels bad. It does definitely feel bad. Zoe especially, I think, the biggest, the biggest one that you already mentioned sure. there. Whippo, though, very comfortable now in this game, has the Rylize, so speaking of ways to make set useless, there's another one, sadly, for Cabo Shard. And, like, look, it's, I'm not trying to rag on Cabo Shard. I just think that the champion here was a very bold pick, and I think that execution, anything Cabo Shard does is worth, like, double points in yeah. my book for the rest of the game because it should, in theory, be next to impossible. And again, if he can get in range of a carry, like, this champion is really, really strong. I, I do want to, you know, like service that, at least because with a flash, with a TP coming in around, like you can just instantly lock someone down unless they have a QSS, your team is going to be able to punch them out. Now, the question is, do Vitaly like full commit onto that type of a target? Because their comp can only really go forward. It's really hard for them to run away. So these fights are going to be explosive and going to be decided very quickly uh, on the side of Vitality. 
And as we check in, Gold is actually still very close. Of course, Nemesis continues to scale, continues to get scarier. Singe is honestly a very weird champion in terms of how he scales, but it's just going to be more and more obnoxious as the game goes on. And I like that Selfmade is just waiting here in the darkness. Whip was a weird champ for sure. Whip was a weird champ. Or did I say? <laughs> there you go. The Kello, Selfmade. Honestly, fantastic mechanics this game. Clean insect to kick back there over the wall. And you know, it's clean. It's self made. It's clean. He's clean, it's man. It's good look. And if there are any holdouts that were like skeptical, like I don't know, is he gonna have the same Lee Sin moments like Brox did? Like that's a pretty good case, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a like, good look. Brox had some sweet kicks, right? Like sure. don't get me wrong. Like self made, definitely has some shoes to step into here, but doing well so far in 2020. And there's Cabochard's flash gone. No flash, no TP. We're gonna be waiting a little bit to see more from the set. And the pick does not amount to too much yet. Fnatic push in for a bit more vision. They are set up to take control, it appears, of the bottom. Actually, and to a certain degree, the top side of the map. Fnatic very content just playing a very spread out map, it would appear. And they're going to be comfortable doing that. Because one of the things that you sort of underestimate in a Cassiopeia pick is like, she sort of slots in similar to Rise in terms of like DPS power in a sideline. Obviously, she, has, she doesn't have the repositioning ultimate uh, to group back up with the rest of her team. But like, no one on Vitality can like go match her by herself. Similar with the Singe, as no one can actually like deal enough damage, lock him down long enough to kill him, even if they would out damage him in a long fight. But I still would favor him over a lot of the champions on Vitality's team. So like, Fnatic can be very comfortable to split out one three one across the map, pick up as much resources as humanly possible. Whereas Vitality, because they're running the Zoe, would much rather be playing two lanes, right? Like push out one, like have a sure just rotate between top and bot, while the rest of your team just pushes out through mid lane and tries to set up for these types of objectives. Oof. And it doesn't get doesn't really get easier too, because you're right. Because as Fnatic grab three ways of farm, as one or two creeps are lost here and there, as Vitality keep trying to group up to try to force something, the gold advantage for Fnatic will only continue to grow. 2K now in their favor off of that last pick from com on on the comp rather. Now Hillsang's actually finished off the Shirelia's Reverie, so a little bit more move speed to try and force these engagements. Allow Whippo to get into the fight. There's the big engage. They've knocked back the kick everyone oh. through, but it's a disaster. What? They kicked him out of the fight. They're still going to find the kill. Can Fnatic get a little bit more here? Jax will try to run, but will get taken down there. And Comp, going to get flipped back. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> Run He's down. running you down. <laughs> but he walks away. Comp. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, we're, I, I really thought they were getting okay, the kill so there, Fnatic if I'm being honest. absolutely <laughs> won that fight, but when we watch that back, it is a bit of a comedy of errors. There's definitely yeah. a Lee Sin kick out of a misfortune ult. There's some crazy, like, Bupo flips back when everyone else is trying to go forward. It it was good. Fnatic won that play, but they're not going to look back at that one with a smile on their yeah, faces. Yeah, we'll have to check it out again in the replay, because right now Fnatic are getting absolutely everything they could want. They get the Rift Herald. Infernal Drake is just about to spawn, so Ooh. they can sort of mosey their way on over there after picking up a couple resets, finishing off some items, too. That's a Black Cleaver now. 18 minutes, two items on Selfmade, so he has a massive advantage over Skeens at the moment. That's just going to mean, like, any fight they take, like, it is a Fnatic win for sure. Yeah. Hugely favored. See what uh, Vitality can do. Cabochard's TP is now back up. Maybe they get the next fight. But we look back at this one. Love the initial engage. <laughs> Everything about this Spez montage to me. And then, oh, he flips him out of the knockup, as you said. Then they kick him away. Skins are sinking. No, okay, will so burn I'm, down. I'm, to be fair, and I'm wrong there. They, yeah. He was still in range of the bullet time, so it all works sure. out well for Fnatic. It's all right. Now, comp just ults get a little extra range. And then heals too. So there you go. Yeah. He's fine. They don't want to dive the towers. Actually, yeah, not bad. Obviously not like... Ideal, some ways to cool down there, but it's a little funny a, at the start. A but good like, fight. <laughs> and, and the zeros tell the entire story, Dracos. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yes, the set pick. But also, very interesting that the damage burden of these fights has been almost entirely carried by the Lee Sin and the Singed <laughs> on the team with the Cassio okay, game. To be fair, I would predict that from the. Oh, oh boy. Dunk back, that's exactly what they need. Hillisang now taken out instantly. Bupo has to run, has to be careful. Comp gonna flash out to save. The ulti coming in from Reckless zones the rest of the team away. TP comes in for Nemesis. The Herald has been used mid lane. Vitality, you're going to be late to the rotation on this one. It should mean the tower for Fnatic. Vitality will back away. Still yeah, take it for win. another one. They should get two towers off this play as well because the entirety of Vitality is zoned. They're moving around. They're teleporting in from behind. There's a fight. Vitality must win to stay in this game. Cabo Shard, but they know it's coming. Jack has to throw the hook eventually. Cabo Shard, no he flash available. Ulti. What? Ooh. Why do you TP in if you don't have ult? I, I think they didn't. They didn't respect, because Fnatic have that ward in the mid lane. They saw the TP coming. Sure. Maybe they were hoping the Fnatic would walk right back down mid lane. They could find that flank. They could get the dream fight and everything would work out. But Fnatic smartly have mid lane warded, and it means they just walk down. 
And you know what's going to happen now, Dracos, is with a TP advantage and Bupo finishing off his Leandris, he's going to waltz into bot lane. He's going to push straight towards that inhibitor tower while the rest of Fnatic just posture around this Baron, right? They'll try to lure Vitality into a fight. They'll try to lure Kabushard away from the bot lane. And if he doesn't come away from that bot lane, they TP in with Bupo from the from the back and then they can find their fight pretty easily. Now, this is the play where uh, Hillsang gets caught way out, did not expect Kabushard to be there at all. And the point and click is going to be absolutely deadly on towards Hilly. So good play there from Vitality to punish. The problem then is, is with a Rift Herald in the mid lane, like Fnatic can just sort of run it through. Yeah, and the reality is the Vitality's composition very highly dependent on kind of positioning tools to make sure that they're in the right spot to actually be effective. So the second they burn everything, it's not that they don't have the damage to kill Fnatic, it's that they can never really get in position. Oh, oh there's about to be a fight. Look at this monstrous fight. TP and Tillisang on the back. They want Saken so bad. Chug bubble though. It's gonna lock up. There goes a lot of that TP advantage we talked about. Fnatic. Well, honestly, well played by Vitality to defuse the situation, but Fnatic, I think, too keen to try to force that one. Yeah, they wanted that to be the fight that ends the game. Now they're gonna rush into Baron. I, I have to think they do this, right? If, if they can keep Hillisang in the fog of war, because they should know that Vitality haven't had a lot of opportunities to put vision towards the top side. So it's just disruption duty for Blippo and Hillisang. Keep Skeens away from the pit, because right now Fnatic are firing it down. Going through. Goes up from Jack Troll, does get flipped back to the team. Not the fight, start to the fight that they want. Advise a bit more time with the stopwatch. Comp now coming in, but there's no way for him to step in. Jackal giving his life for nothing, and Bupo's meanwhile in the back line is going to get dunked down by Set as Cobblesher tries to run for the hills, but that, that's honestly going to be it. Fnatic just walking down Vitality, punishing them for their lack of coordination. Skeens maybe oh. the gun. Ulti goes out. No, still has it. It's on a few second cooldown. He's going to be able to make it out. No, knockups there. Self-made will find the kill, and Saken and Comp now have to run. Hillisang going to find the snare, going to find the lockup. Look at the kill. Is it enough? Nemesis, oh. not going to happen, but there it is. Comp finds one back, tries to dash to safety. It is simply too little too late. The eight coming through for Fnatic. Fnatic coming through with the firepower right there. Blippo just running down the entirety of Vitality with Selfmade right behind him. That duo has been almost unbeatable in these fights, and it feels so bad for Vitality, too, because they were running in to the fog war. They just really didn't have many options. They had to face check, and Fnatic just punished them beautifully for it. Blippo just gets to take this wave. In any future situation where he has a TP advantage, he can triple proxy waves. <laughs> So here it is one more time. Jack Joel just queuing the wall to get in range. He gets a little bit too far in range after the flip comes through. But then Blippo, like, he's just chasing down towards the top side, makes Skeens flash away from him. And now Kabushar, that's when he realizes, like, uh, he messed up, right? Like, he's out of position pretty poorly there, has nowhere really to run. And that snipe was pretty nice on yep. towards Reckless. Like, Saken really trying his best to save this fight, because it wasn't just that. He also landed the bubble onto Nemesis a bit later on, but Zoe has to take these fights slow, and if your champions can run at her, you Ooh. can't do anything. I... Self-made MVP. If Fnatic win this game, we call calling self-made MVP, because this, that body block, uh -huh. just absolutely saved his mid, I mean, mid laner dies. In the I game, mean, he's but... also connecting, like, every Sonic wave, right? He's had good kicks. Like, he's been team fighting very, very well. Where's he going? He's going to kick back. Jack will knock to the team. Now he uses a highway to escape. This pressure comes down. That's going to be big damage. Now it's Cabo Shard in the midst of everything. This is his time to shine. The Haymaker comes in. He flashes forward. It's not enough. It's too little too late. I mean, Sagan and Calm can't hit anything. So now Bubba is back on the chase, running down Skeens. This guy can't leave. Comes the flip. Walking him down. So nope. flipped back. Uses it to finish off the kill. Fnatic are gonna grab Baron here. Selfmade's gonna grab Dragon just to make sure that it's the soul as well as the Baron. That's gonna be it. Vitality are dead men walking now. Fnatic are simply too strong and are only getting stronger as both these okay, advantages hold will on. fall. Vitality are moving towards the Dragon. They're not gonna be able to steal it away. Maybe they can find... Nope, nope. He just walks out. His ult's up soon, so like, <laughs> in 10 more seconds, he can turn around and solo kill comp. And once again, similar to last week, we saw a few moments in the early game where it looked like Vitality were really going to take control, but the second Fnatic started, I don't know, like took the gloves off, it just, they never had a chance. Yeah, and that's typically the story with like new faces, rookie teams, like this is 60% a, a rookie lineup here for Vitality, right? So like you expect them to have like high individual performance, especially early on before the team play really uh, comes involved. You saw Vitality get a, a, a kill in the isolated 2v2 in bottom lane. Say what you will about Hillisang making a mistake, but you know, Vitality have been able to find some early plays. It has just never been able to close out. And I don't think they did themselves any favors either when it comes to the draft, because this is not an easy composition to try and play out. It's heavily reliant on Zoe being able to find good bubbles, on being able to like find the perfect initiation, and against what Fnatic have built, they're just heavily outmatched. 
And it's difficult too, because we heard it from the desk already. Proskurin asking to see Kabushard sacrifice himself, use his veterancy, his strength, his flexibility to benefit others on the team, to kind of put himself not first. But it appears that the strategy from Vitality is still to put Kabushard in a position to succeed. Success, sadly, on a champion like Set, very few positions where he succeeds. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, not been able to do much. Even that last fight, like he, he gets into the back line, but Comp and Saken were single-handedly zoned from the fight. Whoa. They couldn't get any damage in there, so like the follow-up was never going to be there because Whippo and Selfmate are just so good at disrupting. And we saw it already. He's just so far now behind, in, or so far behind now in gold that the Dream Set montage is just pretty dead. He's only uh -huh. at two items. Maybe though they can get something here. Bit of poke goes in onto Hillisang. He's going to dash out to safety. Two grounded effects, though, make it very difficult for Vitality to commit to any kind of play. Yeah, mid lane push now coming through from Whippo, too. So the tower's sl tower slowly getting chipped away. There's a big wave working in top side, too. So after this next push, to come on through. Fnac going to try to break this tower. This may be where Vitality try to go for their final play. So that tower should drop quick. Comp relatively strong. That Sonic Wave connecting. That's a really important bubble on towards Hillisang. If he doesn't get slept there, I think Fnatic can step forward a whole lot more aggressively. Now the waves are sort of desynced. They can't quite reach that cannon minion, though. That's going to take the tower. They have to shift their focus to mid lane, because this one's going down. A few more shots. Saken trying to find Poke. Could not hit the cannon minion. Fnatic going to break that one. Inhibitor should be next on the list. Top lane, massive wave building. And it it's stopping just outside of the tower, too. So it's just there for Fnatic to pick it up. Fnatic may just look for a fight here to end the game. They have double cannon minions. They have Whippo rotating on over here. Instead, gonna back away towards mid lane. The wave pushing on in, not taking any chances here. I mean, it's 8k gold advantage. Oh my. Infernal Soul and a Baron buff. Vitality takes an actual miracle for them to get anything done here. Kabashar trying to step forward, but he just takes so much incidental poke damage. Vitality just can't pull the trigger, so they're gonna slowly watch as everything gets taken out of their base. A second inhibitor should go down to that cannon minion. Oh no! Oh no! Come I mean, on, back they're in! Just, they're going to Australia. So they'll, take go. it. they'll back off. Sleepy self made. Oh, locked up. That's a big shutdown. The knockup gonna go through. Oh, if Comp wanted to go, if he wanted to risk it all, he could go and instantly find the kill. But I just don't think it's worth it. If there were any wards from Vitality behind Fnatic, that's an instant TP from Cabo Shard. They force that fight. Right? That's where they draw the line. That's where they put their last stand. But they just haven't been able to get back on the map in so so long. So Fnatic get to go back to the, the base. They have you know one to two K gold to go ahead and spend. Don't forget they have that Infernal Soul too, so like even more damage coming in whenever they look for these fights. So Fnatic have all the tools they need now to like set up for Elder Dragon into a Baron into an end, if they even need that long. Because quite honestly, if they if they wanted to press, you know, say go right now, they could. They could just run straight down into top lane and, and force Vitality to just give up more because with two waves of super minions coming in into mid lane and bot lane, there's just no real way for Vitality to defend. No, and it, it doesn't get easier. The strong point right now for the team is comp. Comp could be good in theory in an extended fight, but it's just simply too hard to reliably hit most yeah, of I these mean, champions. I mean, how does comp kill Whippo, right? Like, the only way this fight, like, could work, like, if I'm theorycrafting it, like, Cabo Shard has to jump into the back line with skeins, CC someone, and then comp, like, ults into the back line. Yeah. Because otherwise, a Singed is killing him, and he can't beat Singed the 1v1, so he just has to run, right? So it has to be a full dive, full commit on towards Nemesis or Reckless. Otherwise, there's just nothing they can do. There's always a chance. The beauty of the Sleepy Trouble Bubble is it only really takes one change of game. Comp, though, stepping into Hillisang is going to walk down. They're looking for this pick to get things kicked off. They'll get the flash as well as the ult from Hilly, but trading the ult for Comp. Is it going to actually be a positive trade here for Vitality? In an even game state, of course it would be, but here it's a bit oh, more Oh, here comes the TP from Cabo on the flank. He has flash, he oh, has ult. They must flank. find the Fnatic backline. Here comes Cabo, as you said, running in. Reckless. There's no ult on comp though. He's coming in. He's dunking him down. Reckless now flashing back instantly, but it's a beautiful ult from Nemesis. Oh! And instantly the fight turns. It's so clean. It's everything that you wanted. It's self made in Nemesis versus the world. They're obliterating everyone. Nemesis, that ult was game changing. Nemesis just popped off. I've never seen anything like that. The ridiculous petrifying gaze in the 3v4 situation while the rest of his team just ends the game. Just perfect stuff out of him. Fnatic <laughs> gonna find the win. And say what you want about Fnatic, oh. but they sure know how to end a game in style. Clean performance. The last hope of Vitality snuffed out on a beautiful play from the Fnatic lineup. Man, like Fnatic, they had a huge lead, but Nemesis just made my brain explode at the end right there. I think he made Vitality's brain explode too, because those guys threw everything at
at him, and they could not find it when it I feel like him. I feel like Brain Explode might be a little strong, but I do love it. It was it was a fantastic I, mean, I couldn't, play. like, formulate words. I was just like, what? Sometimes all you have to do as a telecaster <laughs> speaking behind a play-by-play -play caster is go, <laughs> and that's it. That's all you need. Did it justice. And sometimes when you're Nemesis, you just, like, pull off the insane ulties, 3v4. And look, it has dead. to feel good, because he was getting picked left and right in the early game. He was clearly the focus. Jack Troll's alts were made for him. But overall, clean performance from Fnatic. I feel like every single member looking relatively good after some of the early mistakes there. And, uh, yeah. Self-made, looks like a monster. Whippo busting out the Singed again. What's not to love? <laughs> Hillisang. Tying at level one, but oh, then I making... thought you were gonna say you don't love Hillisang. I was like, bro, no, Hillisang, no, no, Hillisang, <laughs> great. Level one was rough. I'm looking at him right now, but after that, beautiful. Love to see it. <laughs> it only went up from there. Yes, a lot. Of, like, uh, and this reminded me a lot because last year Fnatic played the Lee Sin uh, uh, Rakan combination so much, and it was all about finding these beautiful flanks. They pulled so many of those off in this game with the TPs from Whipple as well. It just reminds you of some of the best moments that this team has had in the past.